unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Yo, Errol Spence and PBC are furthering the gap between the A-side, B-side when it comes to Terrence Crawford, and I want to explore that in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. Yeah, we working. Now, sign up for ESPN Plus below using my link. It does help the channel in a phenomenal way when you guys click on that link. ESPN Plus, they got docuseries, documentaries, archive fights, boxing, UFC, you know, different things for your viewing pleasure. You can get ESPN Plus as a standalone app or you can bundle it. ESPN Plus, Hulu and Disney Plus, all three apps for one low price. Let's get it. Now, I'm making this video really kind of a follow up to sediments and statements and videos that I've made in the past. Now, quick disclaimer, not that I have to, but I just choose to. I don't have a horse in the race. You know, I like Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. So, you know, on my channel, you're not going to play the whole size game. I don't do that. You know, I'm here for boxing and I'm here to give and express my thoughts. And it's just going to be that. So the statements I'm making, it's not, you know, no preference or bias or whatever it's just what i feel now with that being said i had to make a follow-up video because what i'm noticing is there's a lot of people pandering for terence crawford and errol spence which undoubtedly is a good fight these are arguably the best welterweights but as i mentioned at the beginning the gap is being furthered with the moves that pbc is making for their welterweight star Errol Spence Jr., right? And I want to talk about that in detail a little bit more. As opposed to ESPN top rank, Terrence Crawford, you know, the moves he's making, the branding that he's doing, etc. And a lot of this stems from Terrence Crawford's team or him or his trainer and manager, Bo Mack. They've made statements in the past saying stuff like Terrence Crawford is definitely the A side in the equation. But Yesterday, they just announced Errol Spence Jr. is going to be fighting again at the AT&T Stadium. In case you guys live under a rock, that's Jerry's World, Jerry Jones' own venue in Arlington, Texas, where the Dallas Cowboys play. You know, it could be configured from 80,000 to about 120,000 relatively easily. You know what I'm saying? Depending on the configuration of the seats. I've been there. I went and covered Errol Spence versus Mikey Garcia, and it's just huge. It's a it's a huge venue. It's state of the art. It's clean. It just makes you feel good. It's like you're in there for, or like, to watch Transformers fight or something. You know, it's just it's larger than life, if you will. And these are the moves that are being facilitated by the premier boxing champions, PBC, Fox, Showtime series, with guys like Errol Spence Jr. Meanwhile, you have Terrence Crawford, who's about to fight Kell Brook. I told you, personally, um, I have mixed feelings about the fight. Kell Brook, at his best, he could give problems to Terrence Crawford. But the thing is, that's the operative phrase, at his best. And I don't know that he's at his best. Reason being, he has two damaged eyes from the Errol Spence fight, Triple G fight. <laughs> no, guys. Right? He hasn't fought at welterweight since 2017 and you guys should be subscribed to my channel if not i drop daily content the latest and greatest i go live normally i cover fights live you know in the field when there's not a pandemic things like that but i made a video yesterday so make sure you guys subscribe to the channel for the ill content and the dopeness um i made a video yesterday that kel brooks longtime trainer dominic engel has publicly bowed out and said he's not going to be training Kelbrook. Reason being, he says there's not enough time, you know. So, in layman's terms, I feel he doesn't want to attach his name 
because he's not confident that Kell Brook will beat Terrence Crawford. You know, especially with um, without a long training camp. You know, not even a long training, a normal training camp. You know, an eight to ten week, twelve week camp. So he said, and I respect him for saying this, but he basically said that I'm not training Kell Brook under those terms six weeks i told him we had the conversation you got to find someone else i'm not your guy because i don't move like that that's not how i operate and, and i can i can respect that from a from a a man's man type of uh mentality and alpha male and you know just having integrity you have to have integrity for yourself and your brand and why put your name on something like that money is cool but money listen the thing i've learned about money in, in my whole life is money comes and goes i've lost money and then i got more money back and then i lost it again then i got it back you know what i'm saying if you're a true hustler you can always get the money back so you you can't prioritize money over integrity and money over um your principles and the values that you live by so i can appreciate somebody not just being in it because there's a lot of boxers i hate to tell you a lot of boxers that their whole crew is just a bunch of yes men people are happy for the ride you're making money you're buying them you know food at the food court things like that and they're they're getting to be around women and the fast life and fast cars and you know fights and ringside so they'll just tell you whatever but i can never have that i need people on my team and my inner circle my small circle and family to keep it a buck with me and let me know oh you tripping ego you know things like that but I respect Dominic Ingle for, you know, not not doing whatever just for for some money. And he, he just said he ain't training Kell Brook. So now that made to me that makes Crawford Brook worse because his longtime trainer ain't even really confident that they could do the job and um, have a successful camp with so little time. And they haven't even announced the fight. So I know Bob Aram has talked about the fight. But if you go to Top Rank, you go to their website, if you look at like the promotion, there has not been any official formalized announcement for a fight with um, Terrence Crawford and Kell Brook. They haven't done no Zoom meeting with, with um, Crawford and Brook. They haven't put out a flyer or a poster. And to me, this is what I've said regarding kind of top ranking ESPN they don't always seem like their priority is in the African American fighter you know that's just my honest opinion so they they're not would they do this to a Tyson Fury fight because when Tyson Fury when Canelo couldn't fight because of obvious reasons with his promoter and not getting the Kovalev fight last September they had Tyson Fury fight on that date and they did uh they did their best job to try to make Tyson Fury versus Otto Violin uh, look like this big, you know, extravaganza, you know, and, and big episode. Tyson Fury's wearing a sombrero. He had it on backwards, but whatever. And he like, he had a Hispanic Spanish name that he was saying he was. You know, he's saying he was the king, Ray. You know, whatever. So they they tried to roll out the red carpet to at least give some exposure to Tyson Fury. But look at look at how Terrence Crawford, how, how haphazardly his um fights have been and have been like put together if you recall jeff horn they said jeff horn see i'm inboxing so i remember all of this right jeff horn they said the fight was going to happen in um they said it was going to happen in new york then they said vegas and then they said crawford got hurt you remember because jeff horn was saying he's a princess and he got hurt or whatever and and I, I don't even know if Crawford was truly hurt or if they had to buy time because they, you know, they couldn't make the dates because he, he healed from whatever being hurt he was, you know what I'm saying? Whatever injury he had, he healed pretty, pretty quickly. And then they put the fight in Vegas. You know, it just wasn't, they, he's not getting the red carpet treatment. You see what I'm saying? But meanwhile, on the flip side, Errol Spence Jr., he, he's getting treated like the king of Zamunda on Fox and Showtime and PBC. And you could tell he's a high priority. Like if this was a tier system, he's in the upper room. He's in the, you know, he's the top shelf liquor that they're promoting. He's not the happy hour cheap vodka that they just give everybody. You know what I'm saying? 
and and they're showing that by the actions like putting him in at and stadium in frisco at the start like okay we'll start him at frisco at the start okay he sold that out fifteen thousand. then we put him with mikey garcia he sold that out with mikey garcia you know fifty one thousand or whatever it was and now he's about to be back in a pandemic and they're allowing fans in another colossal fight you know not to mention the sean porter fight in between which i went to i went to all those fights sean porter and errol spence they did great at the staples center you know so what pbc is doing to their star guys like javante davis and wilder and errol spence is they're actually building pay-per-view stars because you have to understand like people are like oh the charlos and numbers i don't know what the numbers are i haven't heard anything so you know that's usually not a good sign that the numbers prevailed and did like better than expectations but the thing is you have to look at oscar de la hoya and floyd mayweather their early pay-per-views weren't what they later became but that's the process you don't make a pay-per-view star overnight you introduce them to the audience slowly but surely you know what i'm saying and just tried and true and they keep winning and then that's how you build them up that's kind of what the PBC is, is doing. But with Terrence Crawford, for me, his branding has been all over the place. It's like there's no like dedicated um, like campaign to uplift Crawford. Like he'll fight, let's say, Jeff Horn. That was a title fight. Then Jose Benavides. All right, not bad. They had a good buildup. Boom, boom, boom. And then they'll start talking about Crawford may fight, you know, just names that you don't want. Chris Van Herdeen or Best Butin and mean machine you know what i'm saying stuff like that so it's it's not really a rhyme or reason and this is why people i guess had criticisms for terrence crawford in terms of when his contract ended with top rank not exploring the other side and the pbc side or see what whoever can provide him uh, you know maybe free agency and just work with top rank you know and keep your options open like mikey garcia because mikey garcia very smart he learned from he was with top rank it didn't work out he was on the show for three three and a half years so he said i'm out i'm not doing that again so now he's he has like trust issues or commitment issues to these promoters and it's just been working out for him he's making great money and getting opportunities fighting guys the likes of sergey lipinitz broner um errol spence and then he went and robbed the bank on the zone. Like most of those fights were on PBC that I just listed. Then he robbed the bank with the zone. We got a report of 7 million to fight Jesse Vargas. And then now he might get a Pacquiao fight. So he playing the game, how it's supposed to be played. Like hats off to Mikey Garcia. He's just out there, you know, hustling and, and, you know, making it, making it work, making the money work for him and, um, getting the opportunities that he wants whilst still not being long-term committed to, a lot of people meanwhile terrence crawford he's committed to tight to to top rank and i think top rank said they have him for his life or, or something like that and there, there's just no way that he can be perceived as the pound for pound um cash cow at welterweight when errol spence and his team keep producing these power moves errol spence flew out of a car comes out of a car accident and is still in a in what is perceived as a bigger and tougher fight than who Terrence Crawford will be fighting, who he hasn't been in any accidents. These are just the realities, people. Again, it's not me picking sides, none of that garbage. I like both. I'm just telling you what it is. Kel Brook, if anything, he's the guy with injuries. Terrence Crawford is fresh. You know, Terrence Crawford is a dog. So at the end of the day, at the heart of it, you know, it becomes a harder sell Crawford versus Brook. And there's no way he can be considered the cash cow. It's just, it is what it is. So I know Bomack and Crawford's team, you know, said he was the cash cow, but Errol Spence, he's making too many power moves with his side and, you know, his side of the street, if you will, to be considered the B side in the equation. If he beats Danny Garcia, bro, that's Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, which he dropped, and then Mikey Garcia. That's his last three fights. But you look at Crawford's last fights, it, what was it? Um, it's going to be Kell Brook, which they still haven't announced. No flyer, no Zoom call. His trainer bailed out on him because they have six weeks before the fight date. Like, just, just listen to what I'm saying, people. You know, how is it that Terrence Crawford and Kell Brook are supposed to fight 
before Errol Spence. Even when Errol Spence and Danny Garcia, I know it changed yesterday, but before that, they were supposed to fight November 21st. They pushed it back to December 5th, right? So even their original date or their new date of December 5th, they were, they were fighting after Terrence Crawford. Meanwhile, we always knew that Danny Garcia and Errol Spence were fighting. We knew they were fighting. It's just they shuffled the dates to make and accommodate for fans and put it in the AT&T Stadium. But either way, it was always supposed to be after November 14th where Crawford is allegedly fighting Kell Brook. The funny thing is, the fight has been announced for Errol Spence, Danny Garcia. Crawford is fighting Brook sooner than that, than November 21st or the December 5th date, and it still has not been formally announced. So this is not, to me, this is not the proper branding. I don't know. I don't know if the pandemic is just making it way harder and they don't know where to put it. And they're trying to get a crowd. I don't know what's going on. But there, with these moves like this, when it looks chaotic and haphazard like this, there's no way you're going to remain the A-side because it, you, your team and the moves don't even look structured and it looks disorganized. Crawford is fighting Brooke November 14th, and we still haven't heard about it. That's why Dominic Ingle don't want to train him. Last thing I'll say regarding this is the the Crawford Brook fight did not get picked up and this is why Bob Arum's doing recent interviews with Sky Sports and he's kind of bashing them saying they have too many pay-per-views because he's probably angry that they didn't pick up Crawford Brook so they had to do a deal with Fight TV or something you know so that shows um that the fight is not that powerful with Crawford and Brook as as much as it needs to be because Sky Sports, they said, oh, we're fighting a rematch with Alexander Povetkin and Dillian White within a week of that. So we're not going to we're not going to pick up the Crawford Brook fight. So, you know, it, it's just there's no way it's a bigger fight than Errol Spence, Danny Garcia. And these are the moves that further put Errol in the lead when it comes to the A side. We unpacked. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.